Have you ever wondered what happens to old ships when they are retired? Are they scrapped? Or just left to rust away? Let's find out. Ships are pretty labor-intensive to build, so even when they retire, they remain valuable so long as they are still seaworthy. For this reason, most ships are given a new lease of life when they retire from their initial purpose. Whether they be cruise liners, warships, or freight ships, there is usually a buyer for old vessels. For example, many World War II era warships were sold to other countries to be used as naval vessels. Many old cruise liners are also passed down from one company to the next. They end up working for low budget uses or are put to work as overnight car ferries. Sometimes old ships are simply repurposed as something else. For example, some old commercial ships were repurposed as aircraft carriers in the first half of the 20th century. Since they are essentially massive floating resorts, some end up permanently moored as floating hotels, convention centers, or restaurants. One of the most famous examples is the old canard RMS Queen Mary. Retired in 1967, she now sits in Long Beach, California and serves as a tourist attraction featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel. She is also occasionally used as a movie set, such as in the 1972 disaster movie The Poseidon Adventure. Some other ships are turned into floating museums. Warships are the prime candidate for this new lease of life, with famous examples like the USS Yorktown, the HMS Belfast, and Isambard Kingdom Brunel's SS Great Britain, all serving as museums. Sometimes retired ships are simply sunk. But even then, they may still serve a purpose. Large ships may be sunk to make artificial reefs, to be used as target practice, or to form submarine barriers. For example, the Salamanda, once a proud cruise ship, was sunk off the coast of Fiji and now rests under the waves, encrusted with anemones and coral as an attraction for visiting scuba divers. Once ships become unseaworthy, there is only one viable option for them to be sold for scrap. Although no longer capable of traveling at sea, they may still have a lot of value as raw materials. Most end up in breaker yards in places such as India, Bangladesh, or Pakistan, where they are run aground and stripped of everything of value. Sometimes ships are simply abandoned at sea. This is especially true for some ships that meet with serious accidents, like running aground. With no way to recover or tow them safely, the ship may simply be abandoned and left to its fate. One notable example is the cruise liner MS World Discoverer. She struck an uncharted rock off the Solomon Islands in 2000, and the captain was able to bring the ship into Roderick Bay, where it was run aground to avoid sinking. The ship was declared a total loss and has remained in Roderick Bay ever since. You can still find her rusting carcass there to this very day. Perhaps the saddest end for a ship is simply to be left to rust and fall apart, and many famous ships have met this fate around the world. One prime example is the famous cruise liner the SS United States. She broke the transatlantic speed record in 1952 and was later retired in 1969. During the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, various new owners failed to make her profitable and chose to sell off what they could before leaving her to fade away in a ship graveyard. What is left of her now sits in the Delaware River in Philadelphia. Other ship graveyards exist around the world, including Olenya Bay in Russia and Nuadabu Bay in Mauritania. Old warships, cargo vessels, tugboats, and other ships are simply left to decay in these places. A sad end to some of the greatest feats of engineering.